how this goes as we go through. So the vote at the end will be the official vote, but we'll be able to take votes as we go through the, through the period today to figure out um, where you are thinking. And then that also allows you guys that are the four different types of energy to be able to see maybe you need to have a little bit more persuasive of an argument. All right? So we're going to start out first with the solar group. Stand up. Yes, please. Okay. All right. Um, solar energy is very high producing, uncostly, and easy to take care of replacement for fossil fuels. And it doesn't pollute. There's limitless amounts of energy that comes from the sun to earth. Solar panels harness energy and turn it into electricity for our houses and our homes. New technology is being produced at this very moment that will help solar panels collect more solar energy for more electricity for us. There's pretty much no maintenance involved in solar panels, unlike breaking windmills, maintenance involving um, expensive dams, and the difficult drilling geothermal factories. All you have to do is wipe off a solar panel every once in a blue moon. The 35% efficiency of solar panels will be a thing of the past in a very short time. With thinner wafers and absolute black solar panels, the efficiency of solar panels will shot skyrocket. Um, solar energy um, can do more to make electricity. It can heat your houses. Energy is the best because it doesn't have to shut off on sunny days um, when the most energy is being produced, unlike windmills that have to shut off on high winds. And without moving parts, we don't need maintenance men to keep up on our solar panels, unlike geothermal energy factories and hydroelectric dams. This is why solar energy is the best renewable energy. Thank you. Wind energy. Even in strong winds, if it's shut off, it can still be turned on again. Uh, it's, it's creating power for most 20% uh, of the U.S. alone, and can be put anywhere that has windows. Uh, you can fix and Hydroelectric. Hydropower is the best because it's the cheapest of all the energies. Creates jobs and doesn't pollute. It creates jobs because they need people to build the dams, set up generators, and manage the plant. When I say it doesn't pollute, I mean it gives off no CO2, doesn't burn anything, and that no gases are produced or weight are used. Geothermal energy is dangerous. I know this because it gives off to toxic gases may cause explosions and the best places for it are where most earthquakes are cured. When energy is not efficient, it's dangerous to wildlife and is pricey. Solar energy isn't efficient because the sun is always out. It is also very pricey to install. Hydropower is the best energy for the future. And lastly, geothermal. Geothermal is the best energy to use because it's most renewable, reliable. Uh, for example, it is most efficient uh, than more m many other energies. Uh, also, re re reduces reliances of uh, fossil fuels. Uh, geothermal has hasn't had any stations, explo ex explosions, uh, you don't have to clean geothermal energy, You, but you need to clean solar panels. We don't have to, we don't have higher, higher risk to kill people while wind energy is killing many people a year. A year. Geo 
geothermal energy creates jobs and is 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 beneficial uh, beneficial for the economy. Um, also, they there is no pollution. Geothermal power plants don't. Occupy to workspace and these help and pro protect ecosystems. Um, unlike uh, solar energy, it isn't. It is not dependent on the water, um, weather, and uh, economies. Thank you, Tyler. Before we start to questions with the panel, I'm going to allow you to have 30 seconds per group to make a rebuttal of anything that you just heard from one of the other groups that was possibly negative towards your group. All right. So let's start out with Wynn. Wynn, did you hear anything that you would like to make a rebuttal um, uh, argument against? Um, they, that we caused the most damage. I mean, you guys caused earthquakes. You guys caused earthquakes when you drew it out. <laughs> all right. Solar? Um, all I wanted to say was that um, our energy produces even when it's cloudy outside. Sun, sun rays are always there. So we really, like, on sunny days we get more energy, but we still produce on cloudy days. Okay. Hydroelectric? Nothing? Everything was in agreement to what you guys had? Okay. And geothermal? Um, we didn't really have one earthquake and you guys killed 40, 40 people. And then <laughs> All right, so with that, let's go ahead and start with the panel. So, Mr. Ross? One thing I'd like to remind the panel that I forgot. Oh, and I see some of you doing it right now. You're taking your notes. You are going to be great on that. Make sure you're doing that. All right, so let's start with Megan. Do you have a question, please? Um, um, for hydroelectric, do you know how many uh, dams have broken in the past year, five years? No? Okay. Okay. Is it Hunter? Yeah. Okay. Um, For wind, how high does it? <laughs> how how high can the wind get before they shut off? Like the windmill, about oh, like 60 miles per hour. What happens after 60 miles an hour? Um, it has to stop because um, it has to be faster or something. Probably that. Okay. Brooke. Um, solar. How much how much land do the solar panels take up? Uh, 100 by 100 square miles. Oh. Yeah. A 100 for. Yeah, for one. <clears throat> so your 100 by 100 miles was for what? A um, piece of land in Nevada that holds enough solar energy resources to meet all the United States electricity needs. Okay. So if I wanted to have solar panels on my house, or just for my house, how much space would that take? Anybody in the room? Like just on your roof, it would like, you can cover your roof enough to get more energy. Okay. So like, they're barely, like, would that be enough to support my energy needs for my family? Well, well, to like supply your whole house with energy, you need a little bit more. But if you're just if you're just wanting to like lean off electricity a little bit, um, covering your roof and solar panels would really help with that, and it would produce a fairly good amount of energy. Okay. Jordan. Well, everything's underground. 
So. Okay, can you explain to us what the process would be to... Anybody else in the group can help as well? Okay, okay. Uh, some of it's on top, but most of the piping is underground. So there's going to be like probably a cul de sac of a building that you, we would have to use, but most of the piping and stuff would be underground. So that's how much it. piping would we require for, let's say, one house? A lot. Is a lot. A hundred um, miles? No, feet? Uh, like about. Depends how big your house yeah, is. Yeah, it depends. Like if you have a mansion, then a lot more than a little farmhouse. Okay. And how deep would we need to put that pipe? Uh, pretty deep because it has to get the energy from the mirrors. Okay. Sydney? Um, for a hydroelectric, how much money will it save? What do you have about costs? Okay. So by using hydroelectric power, are we going to be saving money from the traditional method of, say, using the fossil fuels? Okay. How much? What percentage? Anything? All right, let's talk about some of the things that you guys had mentioned during your um, opening statements. Okay? Um, so the solar power group, they had brought up the idea, and this is for the wind group, um, that the windmills break. Can you please address that? They do sometimes, but only if wind gets up to a certain point that it has to stop. Okay. So that's really fast. And what allows the windmills to stop? Is there somebody out there that's manning the windmills? Is it an automatic so thing? It's, it's just like an automatic thing that stops it. Okay. Do you know how that how that works? No. Anybody? Or hang on. Uh, when the wind speed test, uh, gets to 60 miles per hour, or above, uh, it will automatic, automatically stop from, it's like an uh, emergency car brake. Okay. Because if it's going too fast and your brake won't work, it's almost like you're going to stop. So you just pull it and it stops automatically. But sometimes, uh, uh, with inertia, it makes the rotor uh, spin away. So sometimes they break. Right? And what would happen if they break? What are we talking? Uh, they would uh, spread out like a uh, half a mile radius. Uh, they wouldn't cause, cause that much damage because they're thin and they can be easily moved. Okay. All right. um, the solar group also brought out, this is for the geothermal group, um, that with geothermal you have to do drilling and there's the possibility of earthquakes, and other geological activity like that. Can you guys address that, please? Well, we've only been called in like 40 years, and it didn't do that much damage. So. And that earthquake was caused by the drilling or by the pipes being there? Uh, I think by the drilling. Okay. And do you know how large an earthquake that was? Um, it did well, it didn't do any damage that severe, so, and it wasn't, like, not anything major. It didn't cause any lives to die. All right. Um, the wind group brought up a question for the solar group about that the solar panels need intense heat to be able to work. Yeah, like we need it to make the solar panel, but it's really not like, <clears throat> like um, it's really it doesn't pollute like that much. Um, like you guys, um, like uh, windmills can um, disrupt habitats in the ocean, 
and it can mess up like wind fields. And um, ours, I mean, you need like a couple minute process just for like burning and getting it thin for the wafers. We agree. What do you think about that comment? Bad, you don't make fossil, you don't create fossil fuels to use for our solar panels. You guys use fossil fuels. We don't. What fossil fuels are they using? <coughs> they basically use like waste metal and other materials like that we don't use. I mean, I don't, we just don't do it. It's not worth it. Back to the solar group. Do you use fossil fuels? Um, a little bit, but there's also like there's also um, like there's um, substitutions for our fossil use. So eventually, um, when other energy gets more efficient, we won't need fossil fuels. And what are those substitutes? Um, we can actually um, just uh, any uh, one of these that can make heat. All right, and then hydroelectric. They had brought up the idea that <coughs> to do hydroelectric, you need to create dams, and dams could possibly reroute the course of a river um, and possibly change some habitats for some organisms, animals, etc. Can you address that? Are you Rachel? Looks like you have an idea. <laughs> Disadvantages of and different energies. Okay. Well, what about support for your hydroelectric power? Well, you don't always have to build dams, but you can use the rivers as a way to go down and like, use the energy created from that. How does that work? Um, How would I utilize a river to create hydroelectric? All right, panel, let's take a vote. You have four pictures in front of you. Let's start to see where you're at. So which one do you think, Mr. Ross, is the goal for most effective, best use? Which one would you support? OK, so which one of the four would you support? Uh, three. So please find the picture, the one that you support the most as of right now, and go ahead and hold that picture up, please. So we have a solar. We have a solar. Solar, uh oh. Solar, 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 and solar. Well, solar as of right now, you are winning. Okay. Wind, hydroelectric, and geothermal. Looks like you have a little bit of work to continue on with. So, Preston, do you have a question, please? Do you have comparisons? If I wanted to build a little dam, big dam, how much would it cost? Are we talking thousands? Are we talking millions? Are we talking tens of millions? No response? Cost $63 million to build. All right, so $63 million for, you know, if that's a large dam, average size dam? Just like the average size dam. Average size dam. Right. Can you repeat that again? $63 million. Okay. I'm sorry, I can't read your name. 